I'm extremely sorry that I can't be at the snake breakfast in Canberra today. Um, uh, my name's Fiona Stanley and I have had years now of uh, research and advocacy for the importance of early childhood in improving outcomes for children that are lifelong. I just want to say really about four things. The first is to set the scene for today about the importance of early childhood um, in Aboriginal health, well-being. Uh, and, and, and child development. The second is to look at the research on what is effective early childhood in terms of what it, its impact is uh, over the lifespan. The third is to um, look at uh, effective childcare in terms of overcoming intergenerational disadvantage, which is particularly important for Aboriginal communities. And the fourth is what is effective uh, best practice in early childhood services for Aboriginal people. So I just want to start by setting the scene. We now have years of research um, and from all continents, uh, also overviewed by World Bank, the RAND Corporation and multiple um, uh, academic institutions, which gives amazing evidence on the impact um, of uh, early childhood on the health development and well-being of children. It's not rocket science. When in pregnancy and the first eight years of life is when you get the most massive brain development. So if you can surround a child with very nurturing and positive and stimulating environments, that child will do well. And if you deprive that child of those environments, that child's brain will not develop properly. I mean, the most outstanding evidence for that was the appalling Romanian orphanage incidents where children who, who were left really neglected for more than six months in Romanian orphanages, never ever developed uh, appropriately and their brain scan showed quite marked abnormalities compared with children who'd got out from those orphanages before six months. Very important long-term outcomes being very damaged by these negative experiences. And of course the other, which is my next point, about the research in effective early childhood um, uh, comes from a whole group now of longitudinal studies which show that children, particularly poor children, which is important for Aboriginal uh, populations, but um, in, particularly in marginalised communities and populations, that if you enrich early childhood, and this is involving parents and their children, really from pregnancy right through the first eight years of life, it has an effect on educational achievement and employment. In fact, the biggest um, impact um, from some of the, the studies like the Perry School Project, this is where they get the $1 investment for the $7 benefit at age 20. The biggest uh, impact was actually that the vast majority of people who received the intervention, the early childhood intervention, were employed and paying taxes. And that's where most of that money came from. So if your aim is to improve Aboriginal employment, then your best bang for your buck is to provide Aboriginal children and their families with the most uh, effective early childhood services that you can. But interestingly, the other outcomes that were improved, every single outcome, in fact, was improved. That includes things like child abuse and neglect. Um, it, it includes mental health problems. It includes children actually staying on in the school system as well as performing better in the school system. So in fact, if you want to get good educational outcomes for Aboriginal children, you really have to invest in pre-pregnancy, pregnancy and the first eight years of life with very, very beautifully tailored and nurturing early childhood interventions. And that information, those data, that evidence is on every continent of this planet and has been shown particularly effective for marginalised communities, ones who are poor. Kids who are in wealthy families are probably going to do well anyway. They also benefit from early childhood, but no way as much as kids who are in fact uh, deprived. Very important point for Australia to realise. Um, now the third point I wanted to make is that effective early childhood is probably the most important break point for overcoming intergenerational disadvantage, which is what Aboriginal communities have. Ever since the stolen generation, when parents weren't able to be parents because the children were taken away, the next generation therefore had poor parenting. We've actually documented in our surveys in Western Australia, third and fourth generational effects of the stolen generation. Now, the best way to overcome this and to put kids on the road to being good parents themselves, as well as participating members of our society, is to again have this enriched 
uh, appropriate, effective, nurturing early childhood. Again, I mean this from pregnancy through the first eight years of life. You know, it is a really important point to make that if you want to break that cycle of disadvantage, that cycle that we caused by removing children from their uh, parents and from their land, uh, we have to do this to rectify and, and uh, overcome those traumas. And that will help not just, as I say, the education outcomes, but the mental health problems and high suicide rates that are being seen in Aboriginal populations, because of course it also influences the substance abuse. When we're talking about fetal alcohol syndrome, which is a really huge problem in Aboriginal communities, as well as in other poorer communities as well, then early childhood, particularly from early pregnancy and getting women not to drink and or have programs that are supportive of women giving healthy options, that is a very important aspect of reducing the trauma due to fetal alcohol syndrome. Now, my final point is, well, what is really good, nurturing, effective child, early child care for Aboriginal communities in particular? Because there are some differences. We all know that, of course, the parents are the most important people for those children. And so it is about empowering parents to be good parents. It's about getting that community to step in when parents are unable to do that and to enable the kinds of um, uh, interventions that we do to be the most nurturing, sensitive, stimulating that we can. It's intensive and that's important to say, it's intensive and it has to continue and continue so that it's not a little bit here and then you drop out. It has to be an ongoing commitment from really before pregnancy right through to the age of eight and of course beyond, but by then you've had your major impact because the brain has developed really well. Now, the evidence from Australia, particularly from SNAIC and the 38 Aboriginal Controlled Early Childhood Centres, and I'm associated with a few of these and have looked at them, there is no doubt that, that, that there is best practice in these SNAIC uh, centres. And really they should be looked at in, in great intensity to look at the attributes of why, what makes them so successful. But in my opinion, the, the major reason they're successful is not just that they provide the kind of um, early childhood services that we know work, and they, these are the ones that are close to the child, involve the family, have an educational component, are very nurturing and supportive, um, and uh, have a health promotional uh, message as well. But the reason why they're so successful amongst Aboriginal populations is because they are run by Aboriginal people, and they are therefore very strong in culture. Now, what's coming out of all of our studies is how uh, important culture is for preventing prevention, particularly for mental health problems in Aboriginal communities. So that those communities which have strong Aboriginal culture, and this is data from both Canada and from Australia, the suicide rates in those communities are much lower than those communities where the, the culture has gone, where there isn't Aboriginal controlled services, where in fact councils uh, don't have power um, and, and, and that white people run, run the show. So there is quite a lot of evidence to say that where Aboriginal culture is strong and Aboriginal control is supported by a white bureaucracy, supported by white funds, not undermined, not uh, set up to fail, but those kind of services are the most effective in terms not only of early childhood, but of other Aboriginal services that need to occur. So in summary, what I want to say is, Investing in early childhood is the most important one that we can do to break the cycle of Aboriginal disadvantage and to get people into the workforce and to participate in our dominant society. We do that by enriching cultural, um, Aboriginal controlled early childhood services for which SNAKE is renowned. And, and this is the way that uh, I think we need to go in Australia today. I look forward to hearing about how you went today at your breakfast and what the discussions came up with, but if it doesn't include a major commitment to Aboriginal controlled early childhood services in Australia, I will be really disappointed. Thank you very much for the opportunity to give this uh, bit of information to you.